so till now we have seen how the colonization aspect of telangana was happening post 1972 broadly now we'll take some examples interesting examples like in 1969 we have separate telangana movement jai telangana movement and in 1970 you have a film which is very popular a super hit film that is talla pellama mother or wife directed by ndr ramarao and in that you have a song the song is telugu jati manadi ninduga velugu jati manadi this song preaches unity vachindanna vachadanna edaina maname it means telangana is not different andhra is not different you see the context you see the time period when this song is being written or when the song is being popularized unfortunately this song was written by daksi narayan reddy a telanganite a strong supporter of ndr ramarao of course so talla pellama 1970 film immediately 69 70 you are in the thick of the movement and you get a film and in the poster very interesting poster if you see i'll read out ee naadu deshaniki kavalsindi kashtapadi pan chese vaallu kaani ilanti somarpotulu kaadani oka baludu brahma vakku ga palikina parama satyam idi talla pellama is a social film a family drama what do you have this national or political message in the family drama kashtapadi pan cheyadamu somarpotulu to whom they are referring to they are indirectly see every cultural form or a symbol has some subtle meaning in it this talla pellama poster itself ee naadu deshaniki kavalsindi kashtapadi pan chese vaallu kaadani na pan chese vaalle kaani somar ilanti somar pothulu kaadani balud cheptadu this is a pakka anti telangana statement what they were talking about telangana people they were tell, telling that telangana people are not efficient not capable and this is a message they are talking in the film and another film matilo manikyam came in 1971 now you can see the change till then they were not making the films related to hyderabad they were not shooting or they are not talking about hyderabad they were talking about the chennai arandal pet or any any, any so not uh, some of the streets in uh, chennai N- now they are talked about hyderabad rimjim rimjim hyderabad rickshawala jindabad rendu chakramulu gire gire derigide motor caru baladur అటు చూస్తే చార్మినారు ఇటు చూస్తే మక్కా మస్జిదు ఆ వంక అసెంబ్లీ హాలు ఈ వంక జూబిలీ హాలు తళ తళ మెరిసే హుసేన్ సాగర్ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ హీస్ గివింగ్ ద కంప్లీట్ థరో అడ్రస్ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ నౌ ద ఫిల్మ్ ఇండస్ట్రీ ఈ ఆన్ హైదరాబాద్ అండ్ యూఆర్ షిఫ్టింగ్ ఇట్ టు హైదరాబాద్ నౌ ద గ్రాడ్యువల్ ఎంట్రీ ఇన్ టు హైదరాబాద్ అండ్ దిస్ ఫిల్మ్ దిస్ సాంగ్ వాజ్ ఆల్సో రిటర్న్ బై డాక్సి నారాయణ రెడ్డి సో ఫిల్మ్ ఇండస్ట్రీ వాజ్ మేకింగ్ సటిల్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ అబౌట్ తెలంగాణ ఇండైరెక్ట్లీ బికాస్ in those days you don't have much of the media to create hype or counter discuss so such messages subtle messages and understanding carried throughout the film industry till 1975 also you can see and when jayandra movement was started in 1973 that is against the supreme court verdict supreme court gave a verdict the final verdict of Mul- an mulki supreme court said mulki is justified then what you have to do andhras felt that now we cannot get the employment in telangana so entire andhra was burning till then we wanted a separate state and 72 it got suppressed till then we wanted to live separately as a separate state then andhra wanted separate state from 73 onwards what was the reason only one thing that is mulki rules you have mulki rules so we want a separate state we have 100 reasons you have one reason and now andhra became jayandhra movement for separation and in jayandhra movement though it is part of andhra pradesh there were some law and order issues firing and these things not as great as telangana not as brutal as telangana but immediately the film industry responded film industry we can see on the screen krishnan raju is saying andhra sodarla vignapti chaya devi is issuing statement jayandra says sv rangarao andhra prajananika vignapti says krishna he says this is a great movement bharat charitralone apurvam miranta oke maata meeda nilabaddaru mee kosam pranatyagalu chestam all these things he is talking vani sri is also issuing statement all these statements came in the paper they were issuing statements in the newspapers 
appealing for peace at the same time for separation of Andhra from Andhra Pradesh. The same question we were asking before, why you didn't agree to it? This is what the fallacy of Vishalandra argument. Vishalandra, whenever you are at benefit, when you, are, you can reap some benefits, you want Vishalandra. If you have something in adversary, you don't want Vishalandra. This is what you can understand. So, this is the basic aspect. Suppression of identity started from here onwards. So, space is occupied culturally, physically. This is the first aspect of our class. Now, coming to the rise of regional parties and Indian scenario. All our books are giving of Telugu Desham only. The topic is broad. TSPSC has given a clear thing. Rise of regional parties, not one party. Indian scenario. So, the books, most of the books are not talking about it. So, you please note these points. Very important. Prior to 1977, in Indian polity, you have Dravidian parties or political parties, local uh, regional parties in Northeast or Jammu Kashmir. National Conference started in 1950s only. Dravidian parties, 1950s and Northeast, it is completely different. Even today, you have many regional parties. In all these regions, regional parties were dominant. They were in existence. But in Andhra Pradesh, you don't have a regional party. And post-emergency, what is happening? I am talking about the national scenario, Indian scenario. Post-emergency, all the anti-Indra elements or anti-Indra parties came together and started a party which is known as Janata Party. And again in the 80s, the Janata Party split. And when it came, it came from different sources. When it is split, again it is forming different parties. This is what has happened. All the political parties we call as regional parties today in states have the independent existence before Janata and a common existence that is Janata and again going out as independent. You can see the constants of Janata Alliance like Janata Morcha, Bharatiya Lokdal, Swatantra Party, Socialist Party of India and Bharatiya Jansang. Remember this word. This is BJP's prior form. Like that you have parties. When Janta Party has split, it again split into different regional parties. Biju Patnaik, Biju Janta Dal, Odisha. Devilal, Indian National Lok Dal, Haryana. Deve Gauda, Janta Dal Secular, Karnataka Wang. Then Charan Singh, Western UP, uh, what do you call, representing the rich peasant sections of Western Uttar Pradesh or Jat sections of Uttar Pradesh. So, VP Singh, Janaburcha, came out of Congress. Lalu Yadav in Bihar, RJD. Janta Dal United, Nitish Kumar or Shahad Yadav. And last one in the, on the screen, you can see Atal Bihari Vajpayee, BJP president. And this BJP is not a regional party, but still I have included here because BJP was not so strong when it split again. And in the last, first elections after formation of BJP, they won only two seats, not much. But only after Ram Janmabhumi, they could get more seats. So, Vajpayee, BJP. This is the former form of, this is the latter form of Bharati Jansang. So, this is the national scenario. Indira Gandhi is strong. After again Janta split, again Indira Gandhi is recapturing her position and he became strong. But in Andhra Pradesh, you can see when Janta swept all the elections in all the states, in Andhra Pradesh, Congress was so strong that out of 42 seats, 41 was won by Congress, Indra Congress. At that point of time, Indra Congress was a wing of Congress. There was another Congress, old gods, old men, and this is Indra Congress. In 1977, after emergency, the impact of emergency, you can't see much in Andhra Pradesh. Then 80 elections, again Congress came. Chenna Reddy, the follower of Indra became the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh in 1978. So, in this background, again Congress got established in Telugu land, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana both. Now, N.T. Ramaro's entry into politics, very interesting. Many people say some historic, ahistorical aspects like N.T. Ramaro wanted Rajasva seat because he wanted and Indra was not giving, so he formed a party. If he would have given, he would have become Rajasabha member and no TDP. It's a historical. If Ramarao is not there, 
the sections which want the political power will find out another leader and that person will be occupying that space. Remember this. Don't ever write that. Emergence of N.T. Ramarao is having some conceptual aspects like notion of Telugu Jati. I am talking about what N.T. Ramarao has used and why he has used. Notion of Telugu Jati or Telugu pride are the key words he talked about. Telugu Jati Atma Gauravam. Telugu Desham Pilustundi Raka Dalira. These are the slogans. Why he has chosen Telugu means it is not Andhra, it is Telugu, so that he can appeal to all the regions of Andhra Pradesh. There was a political vacuum in Andhra Pradesh. Only Congress is winning and there is no opposition. So what you have to do? You have to get into position. So you have to get some emotional angle to your slogan. That is Telugu pride. And who are the people who are behind N.T. Ramaro? Very interestingly, when we talk about the caste, in India, caste is a reality. But when we speak of caste on screen or in the public meetings, we just mask it as some social group or samajika vargam. But in reality, what is happening in India? The caste is a reality and kamma social group or kamma caste, whatever you call, was the caste or group which got economic power. Which got economic power, remember, but not political power. Here in politics, as we can see, some castes were dominating, but not kammas. And at this juncture, kamma caste which has come out with a clear-cut agenda to occupy the political space, the opposition vacuum, got a clear leader, a towering leader in the form of N.T. Ramarao. And thus, Ramarao started and the social prop of Telugu Desham was, was kamma caste. At the same time, opposition to Congress. This is linked in Andhra. But in Telangana, you have a different category. In Telangana, you have OBCs who were coming out of the yoke of feudalism, separation of feudalism because of Naxalites. In Telangana, by 1980, feudalism is at least on the last phase. So, the BC sections who are coming out of the repression or chains of feudalism want a political platform and majority of them occupied the post or joined Telugu Desham in 83. That is how in Telangana you have the BC support for Telugu Desham. You had, not now, because now completely shifting. You had the support of OBCs or BCs for Telugu Desham. In Andhra you have Kamma as the core or the base for this party. And another important aspect N.T. Ramarasa has brought to come to power was when he toured Telangana, he gave a slogan, Naxalites are the only patriots in Telangana, in India. Naxalites are the only patriots. Naxalite lay desha bhaktulu. Naxalite lay desha bhaktulu. Naxalite lay desha bhaktulu. What do you mean by Naxalite lay desha bhaktulu? Telangana has a strong Naxalite movement during this point of time. There was severe repression unleashed by Congress governments. When Congress government is unleashing such repression, you people want some respite. And this man said, I am going to provide respite and I sympathize with your cause. And he said, Naxalites are the only patriots. They are fighting for just cause. By saying this, he appealed to the Telangana peasantry, especially the toiling masses or the people who were under the influence of Naxalite movement. This is the background. With this, within nine months of the inception of the party, he could win over the majority seats and form the government, became the CM. Very interesting research was done on this rise of Kamma caste or political power. Rise of Kamma's TDP and import of Andhra culture is that understanding I am talking about now. Like one French researcher from UK, she is a French national but she is from UK University. Her name is Dalel Bemba Bali. She did, his, she did her PhD on the topic dominant caste and territory in South India, the case of the Kammas of Andhra Pradesh. See, if a Telangana person is writing, we can say that you are biased. But a French national do not have any claims or qualms about Telangana or Andhra, he is writing about it. Another paper she wrote is, Importing new cultures to the city, the role of migrants in the development of Andhra culture in Hyderabad. Very interesting topic. This is a paper, not a book. This is not her PhD topic. She is saying importing new cultures by migrants in Hyderabad, that is development of Andhra culture. This is what I talked about. Subjugation of Telangana identity or suppression of Telangana identity can be done by importing the Andhra culture into the city. And after some decades, 
you will not find any traces of Telangana identity in the city. You will find it as an Andhra city. That is what you can understand. Even the Sri Krishna Commission in its report mentioned about some aspects. But these aspects are very critical but very shameful. You can see it says the TDP rule first under NTR and later Sri Chandrababu Naidu was marked by two key transformation in landscape for Hyderabad. First NTR riding the Telugu pride turned the city into a cultural center for Telugu speaking people by creating several institutions and cultural symbols celebrating Telugu language, culture and heritage as if till then Telangana or Hyderabad did not had culture. This is a shameful statement of Sri Krishna committee. Telangana is rich in cultural glory. We had all the spaces. We had collections, we had museums, we had our own spaces, we had our festivals, we have our own Mushairas. In Hyderabad there were Mushairas. Where are the Mushairas today? Mushaira is a Urdu poetry recitation. Where are the Mushairas? Ours was a composite culture. Where is the composite culture? Andras came and it made it as a monolithic culture. So this is what Sri Krishna committee is saying in a reverse sense. He says NTR created culture in Hyderabad. This is shame. Then the rise and subsequent long rule of Telugu Desham party led oblique dominated by the Kammas of coastal Andhra further consolidated Telugu identity. What is this? Who are Kammas to consolidate Telugu identity? Can't Reddy's consolidate Telugu identity? Why Kammas? Because in this phase, in this part of Telangana movement, Kammas are the new party which are coming into Telangana and suppressing Telangana identity. Remember this. This is very interesting aspect. What Sri Krishna is saying, again, a very bad, very shameful aspect of Telangana. He says, led dominated by the Kammas of coastal Andhra, further consolidated Telugu identity. It means you lost your Telangana identity. By saying some false things, he is telling the truth. This is about Sri Krishna Committee report part. Then coming to NTR's rule and its impact on Telangana. First one is abolition of Telangana Regional Board. That was the last political body. First Telangana Regional Council was initiated in the gentleman's agreement. But it, it was not given. It was committee. Even that committee gone after six point formula of Indira Gandhi. Then board came Telangana Regional Board for the development of Telangana. And this board is also gone. NTR abolished Telangana Regional Board and no opposition. And last remnant of Telangana's gentleman's agreement is gone by this. Then abolition of Patel Patwari system. I am not against abolition of Patel Patwari system as it has the feudal sense, as it has some inherited things and those things. In any modern society, it should be a scientific one, no doubt about it. But if you do in haphazard way, in Telangana, it has affected the irrigation system of Telangana because the people who were supplying water near Etigallu are revenue systems which were completely dependent on this Patel Patwari system. We have a different system in Andhra because of the development or economic dependency or economic part of British India. But Telangana was part of Nizam state. The systems which were helping the rural society in, in terms of irrigation were completely demolished. Once you demolish without creating a new establishment, without creating a new alternative, what will happen? All the irrigation tanks or wells will be orphans, will become orphans. There is no one to see. This is the damage he has done to irrigation. Then comes to Krishna waters. Water is an important one always for the Andhra ruling class. He had some pompous, very, very high fly words like Telugu Ganga. Na Telugu Desha Praja Sodar Lara, Telugu Sodar Lara, Madras Sodar Lak Neeli Wali. He is paying back to Madras for his growth in Chennai. And who has to pay that? Telangana has to pay the price. Through Krishna Waters. Telugu Ganga project envisages to give drinking water to Chennai, Madras. But en route, you have Handri Neva for irrigation in Rayal Sima. Galeru Nagari again for this one. Which is detrimental to Telangana irrigation. Our water share is gone because of this. And at the same time, Sri Shailam left bank canal was completely neglected. So in terms of Krishna waters, in terms of the Krishna river, we lost many things during NTR rule. Teluganga project, he wanted to take Krishna river to Chennai. This is what he planned and Telangana lost it. Then, Varuni Vahini, another important thing, Sara, cheap liquor or Sara, what do we call? Liquor, Sara, not Kallu. Kallu is a traditional drink. Again, it has a different dimension, but Sara, made by the government and 
he introduced it as Varuni Vahini. As I said, his words are so pompous, big, big words. Like his Telugu is typical Andhra Telugu, not even Telangana Telugu. And Sanskritized Andhra Telugu is the scheme. Varuni Vahini. What do you understand by Varuni Vahini? Varuni means Varuna. What is Varuna? Again, it comes to rain god. Where is rain in this excise scheme? In liquor. This is Varuni Vahini. Excise generating scheme. This is one of the important work during the reforms in Telugu period, Telugu Desham government. Professor Dinar Simaradi of Central University has written a wonderful book, Reforms, World Bank Agenda and how it is being transforming, how they are being carried out by the governments. Like Varuni Vahini is the one. It destroyed the rural society because of the cheap liquor. Subsidized, at the same time he was subsidizing 2 kg rice. Where do you get money for this subsidy? And he has earned excise revenue and put the same revenue into subsidy. And don't call it a subsidy because you are taking, you are cutting the pockets of the poor people and paying them back in terms of subsidy. But he got fame because of this. And third point during his period, opposition of Naxalites. You can see Naxalites oppose this Varuni Vahini scheme. Then what was the reaction of the government in the police stations? They have erected Shamianas and under Shamianas in the police station, they were selling this liquor under Varuni Vahini scheme. That is why Prasadu, Prabhutva Sarai Dukanam was the joke in Telangana in those days. You are selling liquor in police station because Naxalites are opposing. So you will forcibly with the help of weapons, you can sell to the people. This is the adamant things the NTR did. Then these are all the part of the reforms and already emphasized in the reports of World Bank and encouraging the ruling class to take up these things. Again, another important aspect during N.T. Ramarao rule that is health university. Till then we don't have any central health university for the state and this central health university was uh, what you call uh, designed and he has inaugurated this health university from Vijayawada. This is a conspiracy. Why? Because previously we had different universities. Universities would take the students directly through their admissions or common admission, but universities are the institutions which will take the students through their counseling or whatever the mode. Now, everything will be done through Vijayawada. And when you bring all the medical colleges from the state under one area, under one university, you can deviate from the rules which are useful for Telangana. Why? Seats can be commonly pooled. Allocations can be commonly made. Faculty can be distributed. So many things they wanted to do for Andhra were taken from Telangana's resources. So this is about health university. And last one is dealing with Naxalites. The one who said the Naxalite lay Deshabhaktulu, Naxalites are the patriots, true patriots, has lost his job of CM because of Naxalites only. Not only Naxalites, but this is one of the major activity. Severe repression in Telangana during N.T. Ramarao period. This severe repression led to a resentment in Telangana society against N.T. Ramarao. During this period, in the Naxalite topic, we will be talking about such things like missings. Missing means some people will be picked Naxalites or alleged Naxalites will be picked, but their whereabouts will not be shown. So Naxalites again had to resort to some other form of so-called violence or violence. That is again they go for kidnap, kidnapping the IAS officers. This chain of things were happening during N.T. Ramarao period. Till N.T. Ramarao came, the scale of violence, whatever you call, from the both sides, from one side, was not so big. But from this period onwards, you can see in a raised manner. And in nine, last 89 elections, he lost elections because in Telangana region, there was complete resentment against N.T. Ramarao's policies towards the rural society and Naxalite movement. He treated it as land order than an economic and social issue. So, Jalagam Vengal Rao to N.T. Ramarao, that is 1972 to 1989. We can see 72 to 89 means almost 17 years. This 17 years period has 
one specific aspect that is their main aim to occupy the space of Telangana whether in minds or in physical space. See, colonizing mind is very important. Once you colonize mind, what we will have? We can rule the people. Unless and until the people think that we are born to be ruled, the ruler cannot rule. Nenu palin chadang kosame putte, palin pa badan kosame putte nante tapa palakulu rule yeleer. This is what Andhra ruling class thought of. They have created a new understanding, new thing that Andhra culture is great. Andhra understanding is important. During this period, they have brought many things into agriculture and saying that we know agriculture and we will teach you agriculture. In terms of education and all those things also, we are civilized, you are not civilized. Previously, they were talking very, very, very rudely or crudely. Now, it is in a reformed stage, not directly, but things are done in a very subtle manner through films they are doing, through occupying the physical space like industries, employment and many resources they are doing. You can see the change happening in 80 to 90 in Hyderabad. Hyderabad is the best test, test thing, means to understand the changes happening in Telangana. Hyderabad can be seen. Hyderabad reflects the change. Hyderabad is the, what you call, it is the mirror for all the things. 80s to 90s, some changes are happening in Hyderabad. Again, post 90s, new changes. Previously, I am talking about the culture of Hyderabad. We lost all the cultural things. Like, where are the Irani, Cho, Irani hotels now? Previously, before 80s, we had every corner of the city, every corner of the street, you have a Irani hotel. Irani chai is our favorite drink. We lost Irani hotels. 80 to 90 less, after 90, come 2000, all Irani hotels are gone. Only a few are left, which is scattering to the people. Our food habits, like we used to have Usmania biscuit, chai biscuit, banmaska, lukmi and Irani hotel, where are they now? They are gone. Even generative, which is a rural staple food, is gone. By this time, they have occupied such space also. Means eating generote is a symbol of uncivilized thing. Rice is civilized. That is what they have brought in. So what happened? Generote gone in many things. But now again came back because this state or this capital is diabetic. Because we are diabetic, we eat generote. Otherwise, generote is not for civilized, civilized thing. And very interestingly and very importantly, Jonorate is our important food for Dakkan, for our semi-arid areas, Jonalu, Jowar is very important and we lost it. And they brought back as a style statement as very thin Jonoratelu now today you get in the market. But our Jonoratelu are strong, that is very nutritious. I have talked about a cultural symbol, food habit, but not just a food habit, our language is gone. In our language during this period, once the Andhra onslaught is happening into the Hyderabad city, I always say in the class, you see, how do you pronounce Hyderabad? A Telanganaite will pronounce Hyderabad as Hyderabad because it is Hyderabad. But in Andhra, they call it as Hyderabad. Hyderabad, what is this? It is not Hydra or bad. Even Godavari, which is a Telugu word, how do they pronounce? It is Godavari. Do you see a big, don't you see an important aspect in their language that is anglicized and they hated, they belittled the language of Telangana because it is Urdu mixed. This is composite, this is Dakhani. Our language had many words like Bazapta, Bazapta Chesta, Bakaida, Barabar. You lost all those words and this is language. And of course about industries and employment I have talked much. So, I am not talking about it. So, post 1972, there were conscious efforts to erase Telangana identity. Conscious efforts. Before that, violation was the main aspect. Now, those violations should be regularized. And in future also, they have to violate. They have to occupy each and every space of Telangana. So, what the Andhra ruling class did was, they made conscious efforts to erase Telangana identity. Wengal Rao to N.T. Ramarao's rule made the changes and the fabric of Telangana society is completely changing. Damaged the society. 
rural society gone because of the policies, economic policies, agriculture policies, irrigation policies and handicrafts lost in this period. We will be talking in globalization further and life is gone. Culture is completely gone. Even textbooks in this period were completely anthraized. So they have made all the changes to subjugate, colonize psychologically, physically Telangana. So this period from 1972 onwards demark a phase in the history of Telangana. Telugu pride, a fake news. Telugu, Telugu pride, sorry, fake news, Garkarjayal. Telugu pride or Telugu nation. These are the slogans which came as a false or fake identity for Telangana. And unfortunately, because the ruling class has given it as the slogan, Telangana also followed it to some extent. Followed it to some extent, blurred our vision to some extent, only to some extent they could not do because anything which is false cannot be kept as a mask for long. So what we will see here, these things though they have masked, finally what we have talked about, last point I am talking about, the identity, just I am leaving a link about colonization of Telangana, statues on Tangban out of 33, 32 originally installed, only 6 are Telangana statues out of 33. Later edition is Komarambi. So these were the targets in the last phase of Telangana movement that is uh, Million March. We will talk much about it. Symbols, last point I learned before the assembly about colonizing or occupying the space. You see the Chaurastha, assembly Chaurastha, just opposite to Ravindra Bharati, opposite to assembly. The statue of Tanguturi Prakasham is installed there. Tanguturi Prakasham has nothing to do with Hyderabad city or the state. He was the chief minister of Andhra, not Hyderabad. The first chief minister of Andhra Pradesh is Nilam Sanjeev Reddy. Either you should have his statue or you should have the statue of Burgula Ramakrishna Rao. That will be more apt. But they have erected Tanguturi Prakasham statue at assembly. Chaurastha. What does it mean? Means creating the symbols of Andhra in the heart of the city to colonize us psychologically and physically. This is the aspect.